Saturday, I hope many more 
against the law. There is nothing that qualifies me or anyone else to just stand for you and not be your friends. It's made possible because of the perfect sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ. Today, Father, we stand in that grace and come before you, Father, to together to ask what the Holy Spirit is saying to us now. So we commit this whole time, Father. Actually, empowered me to do what I do, uh, and uh, because for for many uh, years I've heard this uh, uh, term, grace is the unmerited favor of God, and various definitions that I've given. Uh, and uh, when the Lord actually helped me understand this uh, this new definition of grace, which is the the empowering presence of God in our life is the grace. It actually uh, energized me and gave me a lot of strength to uh, walk in the Lord. Uh, what, what I mean by empowering presence of God is uh, God sees us not from where we are today. He sees us from the end of our journey. I don't know whether you, you understand that. There is a journey for each of us. There is a destiny for each of us. There is something that is planned for each of us. Uh, and God sees us from that position and say, Sudesh, I see you from that place. And I'm delighted in you. And I'm delighted in what you do. So, uh, in my life, that has impacted me so much to know that he sees me the way He wanted to see me when He created me, rather than where I am today or any of my shortcomings or things like that. Because I'm amazed uh, sometimes when God moves in my life and says, like, am I worthy to do this or that? Why do you choose me? Didn't you find anyone else much more talented, gifted or qualified? And, uh, and then I'm reminded of grace. Saying it's not because of any of those things, because of the way that he sees me, the empowering presence of God. That honestly, if you start seeing yourself like that, you will see yourself ten times taller than you are today. Not, not out of pride, not out of arrogance, but the way he sees you, because he has a journal for each of you. And my desire for my life, and my wife and I, we, we have this famous prayer saying, Lord, let your journal be my journey today. I don't want anything that is not in my book to take place in my life today. If it's not in my book today, take it away from me. Uh, Pastor, I, I just want to share a few things before I get into prayer, if that is okay. Uh, yeah. Yes, the scrolls. Uh, I use some modern terms so, uh, because I, I, as I was waiting, because.
as a pastor told me, uh, I'm not even going through my slides, but the pastor told me, uh, do what you do. And I was just thinking, what do I do? <laughs> because uh, why am I here? I mean, that's why I started thinking about grace. Why am I here? I mean, I, I, I used to tremble when I think of standing before Dr. Lali. I had a lot of respect for him, <laughs> you know. And uh, one of the greatest difficulties that I has, had when I was uh, uh, getting ready for altars, for transformation, is like, how am I going to translate in front of Dr. Khalid? You know, as a kid, I grew up, when he was translating for Dr. I mean, Rena Bonke. So I'm saying, hey, Pastor, you know, I've been praying. So, you know, <laughs> And he was very gracious, you know. Sometimes when I made a mistake also, he didn't make faces, so I was so happy. <laughs> I honor him, I love him. Uh, so, the thing is, uh, the, the coming back to this thing, and there's something that the Lord laid in my heart, and, and I believe it is for you, and this came slightly on 31st night, uh, when I had to do the degree, it came, I believe this for you. I don't know why I feel it, but uh, you know, when I was, I was sensing that the Lord needs to take away anything that can devour your time, your resources, your efforts in the season that is coming. Uh, I, I believe that for myself, and I'm, I particularly strongly sense that for you. 2019 is is a year where you will not be burdened or pulled down by things that are not part of your journal, your scroll. And that's the year in many areas I, I expect the Lord will have to do some realignment, readjustments. Uh, it's a year that you carefully say, Lord, okay, is this something that I need to continue with? Is this something that I need to adjust, realign for the assignment that is ahead? Uh, one of the things, again, the, the Lord taught me is sometimes in our lives we are so programmed to think that if I did this five years ago then I need to continue to do that uh, and uh, if I kept listening to this source then I have to continue to listen to that and uh, the, something that the Lord actually taught me and my wife is he, he orders our steps and there are times that He will change things and say no not now Maybe right, this worked for you three years ago, but not anymore. You need to get a strategy for this year, for this season, for this assignment, because the Lord is moving. That's why this, uh, I, mean, you, I know that this is this famous thing, everyone is talking about sons of Issachar. I mean, why it is popular is because knowing the times and seasons and aligning our lives so that we align with the purpose of God for today and for this season. So, which means that the way we do things also will have to be different. The way we pray, things have to be different. The way we approach the presence of God, uh, and, and the way we study, and all those things are de changing. It's not to say that we go after a new shining thing, but I'm just saying that let's be open to the Lord and saying, Lord, I don't want anything, take away my time and resources so that I don't have time to do what you have called me to do. I don't allow devourers to come into my life and eating the time and resources because one of the strategies of the enemy is to make you tired and frustrate you. And I have realized that a lot of people, and I have even seen people in ministry, is make you tired, make you busy, frustrate you, and you end up thinking that, okay, this is ministry, or oh, it's a good thing, it's a good cause, good intention and all that, but as a result of that, we are not able to do what I am called to do in this season, in this time. I don't know why I am saying this. Pastor, if I am wrong, please, you can tell me, but I, I felt very strongly about this and that's something that I had to just share with you. Uh, so, why, uh, once again the question is, why am I here? It's not because of anything that uh, I have special than any of you here? No, that's not because of that. It's because of uh, the, the, the time and season and probably a message that the Lord wants to give you. And uh, yeah, I'm not a specialist in anything. 
I just learn from Papa God and just follow Him. Um, one of the things that I tell Him most of the time is, Papa, if you say something, I'm, I'll, whether I understand or not, I'll do it. The only reason I do that is because I trust you spoke to me. And if I make a mistake, have mercy on me. But I don't want to be in a position where I regret later saying you told me I didn't do that. I missed the opportunity. Because it's not a time and season where we could just sit back and say, okay, maybe not this year, we'll do it next year. If you look at our country, it's not a season and a period where we could just chill out and say, maybe this year, maybe next year. No, we don't have the luxury of doing that. We have to be specific. And the time and the season is such where we don't need to know what we are doing. And then we do it. Because, I mean, especially the, the call that came on this nation saying 2019 is a window that the Lord has opened for us to redeem the land. Every day I think about it and saying, Lord, we have 12 months and what do you want us to do? How do we change the things that we do? What do we have to sacrifice so that we can actually make use of that opportunity? And will, in the name of Jesus, can we say this together? Hallelujah. Almighty God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, my Savior, I consecrate to your holy name moments, experiences, and events of my conception preconception and birth. I declare them holy and full of your eternal purpose and will. In the name of Jesus. Oh Father, we thank you, Father, that even as we pray and commit our conception, preconception and birth, Father, everything that we carry in our DNA that is not part of our journey, in the name of Jesus, I break them. I break them. We sever them in the name of Jesus. And Father, we say those are cut off in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, Father. Every wound that we carry from the mother's womb, in the name of Jesus, I speak healing right now. Healing coming down. Oh, every shattered piece of our soul, in the name of Jesus, I speak healing. Oh, every generational iniquity and transgression, we say the blood has paid the price and we speak. Oh, those connections to be cut off in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, we proclaim, my brothers and sisters today, our chosen people of God, they do not have any connection to any generational sin, iniquity and transgression. They are handpicked by God for the purpose of God. So no enemy, no devil, no demon has any right over their soul. In the name of Jesus, we cut them off. We cut every link, every tie, every soul tie in the name of Jesus. And we lose them. We lose them in the name of Jesus. Be free in the name of Jesus. Be free in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Any of you want to stand up, walk around, I'm fine with that. It's up to you. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Tell me, let's go to the next one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, oh, praise you, Jesus. We, we, we talked about the blueprint of God for our lives. We talked about the scroll. We talked about the journal. So we're going to call for the original blueprint of your life to be fulfilled. Because whatever God created you to be, that's what you are going to be. Nothing short of that. Let's proclaim together. I call for the original blueprint of my life that I may fulfill all I was created to do and to be in Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's proclaim that together. I call for the original blueprint of my life that I may fulfill all I was created to do and to be in Jesus Christ. Oh, you can proclaim that again until you are convinced in your heart. I call for the original blueprint of my life that I may fulfill all I was created to do and to be in Christ Jesus in the name of Jesus. Nothing short of the blueprint of God. Everyone in this place, Father, they will align with the blueprint of heaven, Father. Oh, not what the world said they would be. Not what their mother and father said they would be, Father.
Father. Not what their society said they would be, Father. According to the blueprint of heaven, Father. We call for the destiny of their lives to be fulfilled. In the name of Jesus today. Hallelujah. Praise you, praise you, praise you, praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Thank you, Father, for the scrolls that are coming down today. Thank you, Father, for the scrolls that are open today. Hallelujah. Praise you, praise you, Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Okay, we, we, we acknowledge there is a blueprint in heaven about my life and we are going to renounce every false soul every false identity every acquired personality which are contrary to your destiny now see from your birth you have been carrying various identities there are labors put on you there are labors put on you by ch churches your fellow brothers and sisters your family members anyone else whoever whatever they say we are going to say if it's not part of my destiny I'm not going to accept it I'm not going to accept what my workplace colleagues said about me I am what God says I am I will be what I will be what God says I will be I will do what God says I will do that's all nothing short of that in the name of Jesus let's proclaim together I renounce any false soul false identity and acquired personality which are contrary to my destiny in God in the name of Jesus let's proclaim that together I renounce any false soul false identity and acquired personality which are contrary to my destiny in God in the name of Jesus let's proclaim that once more I renounce any false soul false identity and acquired personality which are contrary to my destiny in God in the name of Jesus. Praise Him. Give Him some praise because your life is going to change from today. Your life is going to be aligned with the destiny of God. Oh, praise Him, praise Him, praise Him, praise Him, praise Him. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Oh, lives are changing. Destinies are changing. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Your marriage is going to change. Your work is going to change. Your ministry is going to change. Your children are going to be changed because now you have the destiny from heaven. Every other false identity is gone in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Say, yes, say, go. Every other false identity is gone in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Glory, glory. Yes, Oh, praise you, praise you, praise you, praise you, praise you, praise you. Okay, we're going to proclaim this and ask God to, uh, for His light to shine so we come out in this journey. We're not going to get stuck in this journey anywhere. Every hidden thing in our soul, the Lord is going to cause His light to shine so that we recover completely from anything that happened in our soul. Let's proclaim. I ask for your eternal light of salvation to shine in all the darkened chambers of my soul. Jesus be my light in this path of recovery. Let's proclaim that. I ask for your eternal light of salvation to shine in all the darkened chambers of my soul. Jesus be my light in this path of recovery. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Praise you, Jesus. Praise you. Praise you. Praise you. Oh, that's okay. That's the next one. Yeah. Yeah. Praise you, Jesus. And hallelujah. Oh, we are going to minister healing to your soul now. We have welcomed your divine destiny, your blueprint to align with your life. So therefore, what we are going to do is by proclaiming this, we are speaking healing to our soul. Everything in our past, whatever feelings, whatever uh, memories or traumas that you have had, we are going to get that out of your system. You won't even have a memory of pain because your soul is going to be healed in the name of Jesus. Let's proclaim this. I accept you, Jesus Christ, to heal all the wounds, feelings, 
splits, alters, fears, memories, traumatic experiences, defeat, and all deformed parts of my soul and carry me on your bosom to experience all the love for my soul. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Oh, there is healing in this room. Not just for your body, but for your soul. Everything that you carry from your mother's womb, there is healing today in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's proclaim that again. I accept you, Jesus Christ, to heal all wounds, feelings, splits, alters, fears, memories, traumatic experiences, defeat, and all deformed parts of my soul. And carry me in your bosom to experience all the love for my soul. In the name of Jesus. Oh, give praise to God for healing your soul. Oh, every trauma is taken away. Every memory of trauma in the name of Jesus is removed. Right now, right today, in this place. Oh, hallelujah. Praise you, praise you, praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, praise you, Jesus. Praise you, praise you, praise you, Jesus. Oh, it's time to cast out everything that your broken soul has brought into your life. It could be self-rejection, rebelliousness, falsehood, self-limitation, whatever that may be. All those defected things in your system, we are going to cast it out in the name of Jesus. Because your soul is going to be available for the Lord to use wholly. You are not a broken soul that is available for the Lord to use. You are going to be a soul that is healed and restored in the name of Jesus. Let's proclaim this. I cast out self-rejection, rebellion, falsehood, inferiority, self-limitation, perfectionism, accusations, blame, self-destruction, control, abuse, all known and unknown pain in the name of Jesus. Let's pray, say that again and reject those things. I cast out self-rejection, rebellion, falsehood, inferiority, self-limitation, perfectionism, accusations, blame, self-destruction, control, abuse, all known and unknown pains in my life. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah, praise you, Jesus, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Oh, praise you, Jesus. You're not going to be struggling with these things anymore because we cast it out. Your soul is restored in the name of Jesus today. Oh, praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, praise you, praise you. Glory. Oh, praise you. Until they come, let's go to the next slide. The singers come. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Yeah. Praise you, Jesus. Oh, oh, praise you, Jesus. You know, sometimes in trauma, in, in the situations that take place in your life, your your soul can be trapped. You know, in some, some situation, you, you lose your soul. Sometimes you lose your soul with your loved ones. There are things that can happen. I mean, we're not getting into the teaching. But what we are going to do is everything that is trapped, we are going to release it. Every part of your soul, if it's trapped in some other place, some other house, some grave, some hospital, some person's life through self, or soul dies. In the name of Jesus, we are going to call them to come back. You are not going to have a broken soul, you are going to have a complete soul. In the name of Jesus, let's proclaim together through the power of the blood of Jesus. Every part of my soul and all its virtues come up and out from pits, prisons, traps, homes, desolate places, hospitals, dry places, graves, and any other place of captivity in the name of Jesus. Let's stand up. 
Praise to Jesus. Praise to Jesus. Okay, we're going to continue to do this. See, what we are going to do now is we are going to command every block, stunted and malfunctioning part of your soul to be activated. You know, you have potential that is trapped within you. Because of the trauma and the wounds, you are not, not able to move the way that you want to do. You are unable to do things that you always wanted to do, but you find it difficult. Today we are going to say, no, everything that is trapped, blocked, blocked or stunted, that is going to be released today, and I'm going to move with freedom. I can do what God tells me to do. And I can live a holy life. If you have been struggling with things in your life, if you are struggling, struggling with bad habits, if you are struggling with various memories of the past or trauma, today that is going to be freedom for you because your soul is going to be restored. Let's, let's, next one now. Yeah, okay. Praise. Let's, let's proclaim this. Every undeveloped, block, stunted, and malfunctioning part of my soul be activated and receive the power from God your Creator for accelerated growth in the name of Jesus. Let's proclaim that again. Every undeveloped, blocked, stunted, and malfunctioning part of my soul be activated and receive power from God your Creator for accelerated growth in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Tell me the next one. Praise you, praise you, praise you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You know, we are going to have a perfect matching of our soul. Some of you, you know that there are people who are 50 who behave like 15 year olds. That is because the person's physical body and their soul is not aligned. It's not matching. Some of the people, their soul is 15 but the spirit is 30 years in the Lord. They, they, the power of God in their spirit cannot actually move because of the wounds and the trauma and all the and the blocks in the soul. So what we are going to actually proclaim is there is going to be perfect compat compatibility. Whatever the Lord brings into your spirit, you are able to manifest that through your soul, through your body and your age and everything. You know, there are people who are like 20 but they look like they are 35. But we are going to actually believe that. That according to the, the because what, what does the word say? As your soul lives, you are going to be prospering in everything. Right? So we are going to actually perfect, uh, expect God to actually bring a compatibility, matching and fitting soul, spirit and body. Praise you God. Hallelujah. Let's proclaim that. I ask for a complete divine matching, fitting and compatibility of my soul, my spirit, my body and my age in the name of Jesus. I ask for a complete divine matching, fitting, compatibility of my soul, my spirit, my body, and my age in the name of Let's say that again. I ask for complete divine matching, fitting, and compatibility of my soul, my spirit, my body, and my age in the name of Jesus. According to what the Lord wants you to do, you will have the strength to do in your physical body. According to the things that you have received in your spirit, your soul will be compatible to be able to comprehend that, interpret that, and be able to express that in the name of Jesus. You will have the physical energy to do what the Lord is doing within you. You will never find it difficult to be able to express what the Lord is revealing to you. You will have complete fitting and matching and compatibility. Can we pray that once more? Once more. I ask for complete divine matching, fitting and compatibility of my soul, my spirit and my body and my head in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. According to your calling, you will have the strength to do what you are called to do. According to your calling, you will have the wisdom. You will have the knowledge. You will have the anointing to do what you are called to do. You will not have any inadequacy in your life. Because what the Lord is doing in your spirit is going to be transferred to your soul. What the Lord is doing in your spirit and soul is going to be transferred to your body. And you will be able to fulfill the call of God in your generation. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, praise you, praise you, praise you. Hallelujah, hallelujah.
Now your, your, your soul is healed and what we are going to do is we are going to proclaim that I am seated in the heavenly places. That is the place that you are going to operate from. You are not going to operate like a wounded person trying to just heal yourself, trying to get things sorted out for your life. But God is calling you to operate from heaven and decree the things that He wants to do in your family. Decree the things that He wants to do in your community. Decree the things that He wants to do through your ministry. And decree the things that He wants to do in Sri Lanka, your nation. In the name of Jesus, we proclaim that you will operate. Not just your position that God has called, but you will actually operate from that place. Let's proclaim that. I declare that by faith in Christ Jesus and in reality, I experience heavenly place, glorious places, places of my inheritance, sealed with Christ in the kingdom of God. I declare that by faith in Christ Jesus and in reality, I experience heavenly place, glorious places, places of my inheritance, sealed with Christ in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Praise you, praise you, praise you, Jesus. Oh, the Lord is calling you to the place of Revelation 4. He's not just calling you to just operate from earth and trying to figure out things. You're going to see things the way God sees. You're going to see things the way God sees. Your eyes are going to be open because you're going to be placed in heavenly places and you know what God is doing exactly today. You know what God is about to do. You're not going to be guessing things because you're seated with Him in heavenly places. Let's proclaim that again. I declare that by faith in Christ Jesus and in reality, I experience heavenly place, glorious places, places of my inheritance, seated with Christ. In the kingdom of God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm excited to be seated in heavenly places and operating from the kingdom of God itself. I'm not limited by this world. I'm not limited by anything in this world. I'm not limited by anything the devil is doing in this world because I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places. That's my position. That's my inheritance in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Praise you. Praise you. Praise you, Jesus. So that we redeem the land. Uh, so, one, one of the things that I, I have in my heart is uh, to be come along with people who are like-minded is to and to see uh, how we can help each other fulfill the destiny of God for our lives, our families and our generation. Uh, so one of the things that I desire for uh, groups like this is to see how we can actually cooperately and Pastor was sharing with me a short while ago about this corporate prayer order and we were talking about the corporate anointing. This is a season where we actually together come and uh, support each other and help each other fulfill the call of God upon our life and, and give our shoulder to each other to lean on and that's one of the things that I am here to do. Um, so there are two things before we go into uh, whatever the decrees that we have to do while I just want to position, I mean place that before you. One is uh, something that the Lord taught me and I I'll present that to you. And you can, you can ask the Lord why. Uh, even as we work as a group, one of the strategies of the enemy is to bring division, misunderstanding, and, and cause people to compete with each other in a way. And this is something the Lord taught, taught me because that is how a move of God can be slowed down or, or hindered. And uh, I'll not go into a lot of uh, depth in this matter, but uh, one thing the Lord was saying, I, I was seeing something as a pattern in Sri Lanka also, uh, in, among, among churches, or groups of people who are coming together for the nation and uh, doing things for the Lord, and 
this this whole thing, this enemy's strategy is to cause people to actually compete in the anointing, gifting, and the callings that they have, and that is happening among churches also. So I want us to be. I want you to know what is the way of protecting myself, Lord. How do I preserve myself? And two things that the Lord taught me is, uh, and which I felt I should share is never. What is the legitimacy that I have to stand before you today? What is the legitimacy that I have to do what I do today? And that's the question that I keep asking myself. Now, um, and this is an important question because is it the calling, the anointing, the gift of God or other things that I've learned? I need to constantly remind myself and say, does it give me the legitimacy to do what I do today? And this can even take us to a place of having pride and arrogance. Uh, I'm not trying to say any of you are like that. I'm just telling you from my heart where I constantly search my heart and remind myself saying, the calling upon my life, the assignment upon my life, my gifting, the anointing, talent should never be the one thing that gives me the legitimacy to stand and do what I do today. And on the other hand, we can actually talk about the works, the sacrifices and the things that we have done for the Lord and get into a whole area of humility and saying I'm nothing, dust and this. Is that what is, is that the thing that is going to give me the legitimacy to do what I do? The works, the gifts that I have received from the Lord, does it give me the legitimacy? Or the works that I do for the Lord? Because I pray so many hours, because I have done this, because I have done this in my life, is that what is going to give me the legitimacy? to do what I do, to stand before God and say, because these are two important pillars, it's like, uh, how many of you know bowling? Yeah, I'm sure you have seen the bowling alley. It's like the two gutters. One side you have this gifting, anointing and the things that we have received and we think that qualifies me. On the other side we think the works that we do that qualifies me. And the Lord is saying, no, if you get into one of the gutters, you're disqualified. You're out of the race. Your only thing that gives you the legitimacy or, or qualifies you, it's your position with the Father. I am a son of God. And this is, I, I again and again remind myself and tell the Lord, Lord, everything that you have gifted me with, Everything, whether it's there is anointing upon my life or gifting, calling, the position, the, the, how people have prophesied over me, all that is good, but that is not what gives me the quali qualification to stand before you. I am a son of God. And on the other hand, no matter whatever I have been doing in my life, how many things I have sacrificed in my life, none of those things should be the qualifying factor in my life, Lord, but I am yours. I am yours. And we come to a place of saying, Lord, I'm yours, I belong to you, I'm your son, you're my father. And tomorrow if I don't have the anointing, that's fine, I'm yours. Tomorrow if I don't pray for 10 hours, I'm okay because I'm yours. And that brings us to a place of intimacy with the father. I'm yours, I belong to you. With a, with a, and that will bring us to a place of saying, Lord, it doesn't matter today whether I perform a miracle or not, I know who I am because I am yours, I belong to you, I am for you, I am available for you. You tell me to go out and do something, I am available. You tell me to be silent and keep quiet, I am available. You tell me don't talk to anyone, I am available. You tell me to go out and preach, I am available. It's not anything that I have received or it's not anything that I have achieved or done. It's about you and me. I'm yours. I'm available. 
Because this is the kind of generation the Lord is seeking. Because I believe in the days to come, we are going to be used not because of any of the gifts or the sacrifices, because of our intimacy and the relationship with the Father. Someone who is saying, Lord, I am available for you. I am available for you because you are my Father and I am yours. I am available for you. And it brings us to a complete surrender. A life surrendered to Him. I'm sure there are people like this here. I'm just sharing what is in my heart. It's a burden. I cannot move on with the decreeing and declarations today without sharing this. And He's inviting us to that place of saying, I want you. I want you. I, I like your gifting, I like your talent, I like your sacrifices, I like everything that you do, but I want you. I want you because the days and years that are ahead, the things that we are going to do, he's looking for someone because I've said this before and I'll say it again, he's looking for people who will not wait for a prophecy to do something, he will look for people who will know the look of the Lord. They will know when the Lord turns to them, they know what God wants to do. They will hear the heartbeat of God. They will know the, the, the voice of the art of God. You don't need a prophet to come and say, you will feel the Father's heart. And that's what I'm craving for. I'm, I'm craving for a, for a deeper relationship where when I look at the Father's eyes, I can read His eyes. That's what he's calling me. That's, that's what he's calling you and me. And because I, I believe there is an assignment on this church. You have labored for years. You have sacrificed the Lord. You have been foreigners. And there is a purpose. And with, with, with what the Lord has shared with me, I'm, I'm sharing this because greater works and greater anointing requires greater level of consecration right because i believe the coming season is that that's why i mean you don't think that this is like a punishment or review no this is a call for a greater intimacy and greater relationship so that the greater level of glory can manifest in and through your life. That is why this is. It's not a rebuke. It's not because you are disqualified. But what is to come is much greater than anything that you have experienced before. And in this nation, what we are talking about is not, not just healings. We are talking about a global revival sparking off from Sri Lanka that will go across all the nations of the world. And do you understand that assignment? How big that is? And that's why he's inviting us saying, okay, greater level of anointing, greater level of the works of God that will have take place in and through our lives. And he's calling us for a greater consecration, greater commitment, greater cleansing. Our lives. I mean, this last one week, I, I go, I'm in the marketplace and I, I deal with all sorts of people, people who want my opinion about the politics. I mean, I, I deal with some Chinese clients who want to know about the, this minister, that minister, this government, this department and all that. And I, I, I have to basically think about every word that I utter because we, when we had the prayer altar, we were talking about how the land is cleansed and now the land is open to do what I say. I cannot continue to say the things that I used to say about my politicians and my leaders and my nation and the government. Because the land will hear my voice and submit to that. And that's why we are talking on a greater level of consecration, commitment and cleansing. My words matter, my thoughts matter, my actions matter. So. The, the greater level of glory that we are talking Pastor, sorry. Okay. Finish. Okay. Uh, he's talking about people who are tested with the light of God. And I, I believe that 
the, the times and seasons that we are coming into is not the same as before, where the, the light of God emanates from that. It, there is that glow, the light of God that we are going to be carrying wherever we are. And that is why the greater level of consecration, commitment and cleansing we are asking. See, sometimes I don't know whether you have ever asked, like why am I continuing with this whole name of altars for transformation? I believe that each one of us is going to be an altar carrying the fire of God in our life wherever we go. And that's my dream for every person who has been coming for the conference. That your life becomes the altar carrying that fire of God, that fire from heaven. And for that to take place, our lives have to be completely surrendered. There is no other agenda, there is no other plan. And that's, that's what I was saying. It, it's not about what I can perform and do and how will I preach. It's not about how many things I have done for the Lord. It's not that. It's about Him and me. Because that will take us to a place of the light of God shining in my life. Now, why is this light of God shining in my life matters? Because when dark, light goes to the place of darkness, the darkness will flee. That's what we are expecting in this nation to happen. Wherever you are, I mean, I am, I am, and this is the dream that I have for myself and everyone that I, I come in contact with, that I carry so much of the light of God that demons flee wherever I go. This nation, the kind of revival that we are expecting is, we don't have to even pray. We carry the holiness of God, the fear of God, the fire of God, and the light of God when we get into a place that people will actually feel the presence of God, that revival experience will come wherever I go. And, and in, in Romans 13, 12, uh, since I have not mentioned any scriptures, <laughs> We also unravel the works of darkness and we clothe ourselves in the armor of light. The armor of light, the light of God. And I, I go back to sometimes talking about the, the, the first thing, the light of God. It's not, the, uh, of course, pastor has written books about that whole creation thing and I was reading. And saying that the, the light of God that is so powerful. And that light is in my spirit and that needs to be manifested. And that is the armor that we are going to wear. Because there will be situations that you will, you will go and stand in a place that you will not say anything, you will not say a word because of the presence of God that is in your life. The light that carries, that light will cause people to change. They cannot even think anything unknowingly because of the light that you are carrying. And I, I, I actually desire that for you and, and for my life. That we will wear the light, the armor of light in our lives. That we go into situations and change the whole atmosphere. And that is an uh, atmosphere where the devil cannot even stand. And uh, um, yeah. so. The, the last part I have is uh, creating a spiritual bond with each other to form a frontline warriors for the nation. Because if, if we come to such a place, we come to a place where we say, Lord, I don't stand for myself, I stand for you and each other. And I, I believe this word for you all can we make a frontline a spiritual barrier for the nation and I don't know how many of you are willing to pay the price for that but God is asking I, I want a frontline warriors to stand and say nothing can go beyond this line we, we, we carry so much of holiness we, can, can we, we live with so much of consecration commitment and a cleansed life, nothing can go beyond this light because there is a light that stops anything that try to devour this nation or mess up in this nation. And, and, and the invitation is to form an alliance with allegiance to one another. And 
your, your secret tool is the, the partnership and, and loyalty to each other. Saying, even telling the devil that you mess with him, you mess with me. And that, that's the kind of front line because it's like you're holding each other's hands and saying nothing can go beyond because that, that calls for a line where each one is giving the strength and everything and saying nothing can actually come between us. And, um, and this will lead us to a corporate anointing so greater than uh, anything that uh, nothing will be able to penetrate through this. This frontline warriors with alliance and uh, this uh, frontline warriors with allegiance to one another will be so strong, so greater with the light of God that nothing will be able to penetrate through that. And this is what I call the John 17 level of partnership. As the Father and the Son is one, so we are going to be one with each other. There is this greater level of intimacy with the Father and greater level of partnership with each other. Loyalty. I don't want to apologize about saying this, but I felt so strongly that these are things that I want to present to you. And it is, again, uh, for the assignment that is ahead. And I, I want to read this scripture in Hebrew 13, 20 and 21. Now may the God of peace who brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you complete in every good work to do his will, working in you what is well pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Uh, what I want to highlight is make you complete in every good work to do his will, working in you what is pleasing in his sight. So that's going to be the journey in 2019. It's going to be working in you what is pleasing in his sight, not anyone else. Uh, and that's a life that is sold out for God. A life of surrender, willfully giving out all for the Lord. A life of submission, that is to willing to lose anything to obey the Father. And a life of faithfulness. Never backing off, never giving up. Hold on till the end. And a life of brokenness. A life of repentance. Always quick to put ourselves right before the Lord. A life of repentance then. So, a life of surrender, submission, faithfulness and brokenness. So, I, I presented what I had to, now I'm ready for Predicates and declarations. Uh, yeah, so let's, uh, if you want to sit and stand, or however, um, I have just put this together just for you. And I want to start off by
consecration, commitment, and a cleansing. So there are different aspects. So what we are going to do in terms of um, prayer decrees and proclamations, uh, we will have a mix of decree, proclaiming, and declaring, and certain things would even involve uh, uh, repentance. So um, can, can we start uh, with this? I mean, I'm, I'm not going to ask you to repeat after me, but we could read together and proclaim. What we are going to do is we are going to commit the moment of conception. Um, because one of the things that prevents us from being effective in the things of the Lord is, uh, is some of the wounds that we carry. And some of the wounds that we carry, we carry from our birth. Uh, and, and some of the issues that involve uh, I mean, we, we, we face in our life is from our childhood or it could be from our generation, bloodline. So let's start uh, by confessing this together. Are you all ready? Yeah? Okay, let's say, Almighty God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, my Savior, I consecrate to your holy name moments, experiences, and events of my conception, preconception, and birth. I declare them holy and full of your eternal purpose and praise to Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, when your soul is healed, then there is the blessing of God that can actually flow through your life, from your spirit, to your soul, and to your body. There is nothing blocking and limiting. Everything that is blocked in your life, everything that is delayed in your life, everything that is withheld in your life, that is going to be released because you are healed in the name of Jesus. Let's proclaim this together. I establish my soul in divine health, divine wealth, fulfillment in Christ, the unconditional love of God, the peace of God, the joy of the Lord, and all spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus to serve the purpose of God in my generation. No more will you be looking for satisfaction, fulfillment in any person or anything. Now you can freely say, Lord, whether I do perform miracles or not, I know who I am because my fulfillment is in Christ Jesus. Therefore, it doesn't matter what people say. It doesn't matter what people think. I know who I am. I know where I am. I know what I can do. I know what God says about me in the name of Jesus. Let's proclaim this once more. I establish my soul in divine health, divine wealth, fulfillment in Christ, the unconditional love of God, the peace of God, the joy of the Lord, and all spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus to serve the purpose of God in my generation. Oh, you're not going to be finding any lack in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Praise to Jesus. Praise to Jesus. Oh, there's fulfillment for you. Oh, you don't have to look for that in money. You don't have to look for that in food. You don't have to look for fulfillment in the clothes that you wear, the vehicle that you drive. Your fulfillment is in Christ Jesus. Your soul knows who you are. You know your identity. You don't have to struggle in anything because your fulfillment comes from Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise you, praise you, praise you, praise you. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, praise you, praise you, praise you. Oh, praise you. You, you can just read this and know what we are going to be proclaiming because you need to proclaim this. Your life is going to change today. I believe that for you. Today things are going to change to be aligned. Everything that is misaligned is going to be aligned right. Everything that is being messed up, every chaos has to be gone in the name of Jesus because God is straightening all the crooked things in your life. Everything that is misaligned is going to be aligned today. You are able to walk in the perfect will of God without any difficulty because life, your life is aligned in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's proclaim together. Father, I choose to align my will with your will. My thoughts with your thoughts. I command everything that is misaligned to line up with your 
purposes and plans. I want what you desire for me. Your plans are good. You want to prosper me and not harm me. To bring me hope and a future. Fill me with the knowledge of your will. That I may live a life worthy of you. And that I may please you in every way. In Jesus name. Making your prayer of cons consecration. Or committing your life afresh to God. That he's going to reveal things to you as never before. You're going to be able to fulfill the purpose of God for your life. Without any discovery. Let's pray that again as a prayer of consecration. Father, I choose to align my will with your will. My thoughts with your thoughts. I command everything that is misaligned to line up with your purpose and plans. I want what you desire for me. Your plans are good. You want to prosper me and not harm me. To bring me hope and future. Fill me with the knowledge of your will. That I may live a life of worthy of you. That I may please you in every way. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise you. Praise you. Praise you Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Glory. 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 Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, praise you. Yeah. Oh, praise you, praise you, praise you. Oh, nothing is going to hijack your destiny anymore in the name of Jesus. Oh, your destiny is going to be fulfilled and nothing will be able to rob that in the name of Jesus. It is sealed with the precious blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah, praise you, Jesus. Let's proclaim, I testify in
I'm, I'm going to lead you through some decrees and declarations that actually say that the Lord will remove everything that is not supposed to be part of my journey or my life. There is no room for any devourer in your life. Anything that the enemy has planted in your life that is not part of your scroll is going to be removed. Nothing is, nothing is going to drain you. You know, there are some in, in some trees, there are sucker branches, they call it. It, it just takes the sap, the life of the tree, so that the tree cannot bear fruit. And you will never be a tree like that. You will bear fruit. So we're going to actually talk, uh, pray and declare and decree that anything that the Lord has not brought into my life, any person, any group, any assignment of the evil one will not be able to be there because I am going to align with the purpose of God for my life. 2019 is a year that you come into full alignment with the purpose of God. According to your scroll, your book, your journal, your life is going to be according to His journal every day of your life. And from this day you will wake up in the morning and say, Lord, let your journal be my journey. I don't want anything that you have not prepared to come in my life and waste my resources because I am yours. You are not yours. You are God's. You belong to God. Your time belongs to God. Your resources belong to God. Your children belong to God. Your house belongs to God. Your anointing belongs to God. Nothing else. There's no part. We are not going to share anything with the devil or his plans. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise it. The name. Yeah. No, not this time. Yeah. Go in that side. Praise it, Jesus. Praise it. Yeah, next time. So we're going to order, now we're not going to pray, we're going to order, we're going to decree. You're seated in heavenly places. When you're seated in heavenly places, you're not going to beg and plead. You're going to command, you're going to decree, you're going to order. Because you're seated with the Lord and the Lord never pleads the devil to do things. He'll say, okay, you're out and he has to go. And in the name of Jesus, we're going to order the according to eternal decrees. Removal of every person or groups working against the destiny of your life. Anything that the law, uh, that enemy has brought to work against you, it's going to be removed. Believe that and let's proclaim that together. Okay, let's proclaim that. I order my internal decrees of righteousness. The removal of every person or groups working against the divine destiny for my life. I order them to be removed out of my sphere of influence my family, my work, and my ministry. In the name of Jesus, let's proclaim that again. I order by eternal decrees of righteousness, the removal of every person or group working against the divine destiny for my life. I order them to be removed out of my sphere of influence, my family, my work, and my ministry. In the name of Jesus, amen, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise to Jesus. Praise to Jesus. Let's go to the next one. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, see, as the Lord removes things, He will rearrange things. And just expect changes to happen in your life. For your good. The Lord is going to bring people that will actually add to your calling. Add to your ministry. Add to your anointing. Oh, add to your growth. He's not going to bring anyone who's going to devour. Now that you have removed the unwanted ones, we are going to call in things that will add to your calling so that you can fulfill. Expect God to bring new connections, new relationships. Oh, God will open doors so that you will see, you will have a smooth ride. I'm sorry, it may sound like a very casual word, but you're not going to be struggling because you don't have people who are burdensome in your life. The Lord will actually rearrange things so that you can do things the way God called you to do. 
Okay, let's proclaim together. I order by eternal decrees of righteousness the rearrangement and realignment of relationships and connections in my sphere of influence, my work, my family, and my ministry. In the name of Jesus, I order by eternal decrees of righteousness the rearrangement and realignment of relationships and connections in my sphere of influence, my work, my family, and my ministry. In the name of Jesus, and I proclaim anything in your workplace that the devil has planted that is hindering your growth. In the name of Jesus, those things will be removed. Anything that is hindering you from doing what God has called you to do in your calling, the Lord is rearranging and removing those things that you are going to operate in the anointing with the full potential. Not halfway through that. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Uh, till you, let's go back. I, I want to make that proclamation again. I order by eternal decrees of righteousness, the rearrangement and realignment of relationships and connections in my sphere of influence, my work, my family, and my ministry. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise you, praise you, praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for the angels who are released now to go and realign things at home of everyone's family, Father, everyone who's gathered here, Father. We thank you that your angels are now commissioned to go into their families, Father, into their work environment, Father, into their family situations, Father, into their callings and ministries, wherever they are, Father. Thank you, Father, for your angels are now working, Father. They are just realigning things. Father, because we have decreed now, Father, they are at work, they are at work in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, 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 oh praise to Jesus, hallelujah, let's proclaim this, I order by authority of God, any personal groups not assigned by God to be a part of my life, my work. My ministry to be removed by the finger of God in the name of Jesus. Now don't take me wrong. Some things from the past season cannot move in this season. You need to understand. Right? So that's what we are going to say. It's not negative. If God wants to bring new things, it will have new things. If God wants to take away some things, it will have to be taken away. So we are going to proclaim that God is actually rearranging people in our lives that even bring things and this is what we are going to believe God to do. I order by the authority of God any person or groups not assigned by God to be a part of my life, my work, my ministry to be removed by the finger of God in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, sir, let's go. Oh, praise you, praise you, praise you, praise you. Oh, praise you, praise you, praise you. Hallelujah. We are, we are going to just we speak blessing over all of these things. Any project that you are involved in, any activity, your fruit, your seeds, your time, your strength, and everything that the Lord has given, nothing is going to devour. Hallelujah. Praise you. Let's proclaim this together. I honor by the authority of God any person, any group, any activity, any project that devour my anointing, my seeds, my fruit, my time, my strength, my time, and my ministry to be removed by the finger of God in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Oh, praise you, praise you, praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we say our time is yours, Lord. Everything that we do is yours, Lord. Oh, the anointing upon my life is for you and you alone, Lord. The anointing upon my life is not for me, it's not for others. It is available for you to use it the way you want to use it, Lord. Lord, the seeds that you have given, Father, the seeds of the Word of God, the wealth that you have brought, Father, every other seed at my disposal is yours, O oh Lord. No enemy can hijack that, steal that, rob that in the name of Jesus, O oh Lord. Oh, we thank you. Let's go back to that. Let's proclaim that again. 
my scroll, my journey written by God before the foundation of the world. Must say, okay, let's proclaim this together. I acknowledge, welcome, and allow the Lord's destiny for my life, family, and ministry in conformity to God's will to be established in my bloodline in the name of Jesus. Let's proclaim that. I acknowledge, welcome, and allow the Lord's destiny for my life, family, and ministry in conformity to God's will to be established in my bloodline. In the name of Jesus, would you give him a praise because your generation is mighty? Oh, restore! Oh, your generation is blessed. Your daughter's son is blessed. Your children's children are blessed. They are not going to experience anything that you experience because your generation is blessed and the destiny of God is fulfilled. Let's sing a praise song to the Lord and give him praise because every satanic ordinance is removed and the blessing of God has entered your bloodline in the name of Jesus. Like that, say I am God. 
God's favorite daughter. I'm God's favorite son. Let's say it like you mean it. Let's declare that. I declare today that his journey for my life will be my journey. I refuse to accept any substitutes. I refuse to settle for the second best. I reject every shadow plan or shortcuts to my destiny in the name of Jesus. I want to tell all the boys and the girls, you don't have to settle for the second best. If God has ordained a girl or a boy for you, you will have the best. You're not going to settle down for the second best. You're not going to get married for the sake. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, you don't have to just get married to any guy because you're getting old. You're going to have the best guy in town. Huh? Because that is what is required for your calling, your assignment. You will have a man coming your way according to your calling and assignment. You will have a young girl coming your way, not just so that you can have a wife, someone who compliments your calling and your assignment according to your calling. So let's believe that and let's proclaim that once more as you believe that and proclaim that. And fathers and mothers, please proclaim that for your sons and daughters. Your son is not going to get married to any girl in town. He is going to marry, get married to the person ordained by God. Hallelujah. Praise to Jesus. Let's proclaim that. I declare today that his journey for my life will be my journey. I refuse to accept any substitutes. I refuse to settle for the second best. I reject every shadow of plans or shortcuts to my destiny in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, praise you, praise you, praise you. Hallelujah. Let's go to the next one. I accept to abide by the new covenant in the blood of Jesus Christ for protection, redemption, prosperity, and fruitful living in my bloodline now and all the days of the earth. In Jesus' name. Let's proclaim that again. I accept to abide by the new covenant in the blood of Jesus Christ for protection, redemption, prosperity, and fruitful living in my bloodline now and all the days of the earth. Oh, praise you, praise you, praise you, praise you. Oh, let's say we come alive on all matters pertaining to our healing, prosperity, and greatness. Let's proclaim together. Now I choose to come alive. Oh, sorry. Now I choose to come alive on all matters pertaining to our healing, prosperity, and greatness in Christ Jesus to serve the purpose of God in my generation without fear, in holiness and righteousness all the days of my life. Oh, praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Let's proclaim that again. Now I choose to come alive on all matters pertaining to our healing, prosperity, and greatness in Christ Jesus to serve the purpose of God in my generation without fear, in holiness, and righteousness all the days of my life. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 You know, there's another important thing. We are talking about the scrolls, the books, and the journals. But you need to know the journals. So what we are going to ask God is that He will help you see your scroll. He will open the books of heaven so that you know what your journey is. You're not going to be guessing things in your life. You're not going to be guessing things about your ministry. You will know what your calling is. You will know what your gifting is. You will know what you should be doing when. So let's proclaim that. Uh, yeah. Praise the next slide please. Okay, we are going to ask God to give us the favor to unreservedly to open and read what is written about your life, your family, your ministry. You will know what the purpose of God for your family. You will know what the purpose of God your ministry. You will know what the purpose of God for, for your life in the name of Jesus. So let's proclaim that together. Having obtained mercy, forgiveness and cleansing through the eternal covenant in Jesus Christ and by His blood, I seek the favor of God unreservedly to open and read what is written about my life, my family, my ministry in the books of heaven. Okay, let me, I have to do an explanation here. Now why are we saying, why are we talking about 
of mercy, forgiveness and cleansing through the blood of Jesus Christ. A lot of the times we are unable to open the books of heaven when there is iniquity in the bloodline. The books are sealed. Books are not revealed when there is iniquity and transgression in the bloodlines and it blocks. And what we did today was we proclaimed that our bloodlines are cleansed. We are redeemed. We are restored. And every sin in our generation lines, we were actually we proclaimed the blood of Jesus Christ. And therefore, we have access to the books of heaven. There is no enemy who can come into the courts of heaven saying, okay, this bloodline is corrupted. He cannot come and say the destiny cannot be released because of this iniquity or transgression. Therefore, you will have access to your books in heaven so that you can live out the books in your life, in your family, in your ministry. So let's proclaim that again. Having obtained mercy, forgiveness and cleansing through the eternal covenants in Jesus Christ and by His blood, I seek the favor of God unreservedly to open and read what is written about my life, my family, my ministry in the big books of heaven. In the name of Jesus, Hallelujah. Praise you. Praise you. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And along with that, let's proclaim this. In agreement with the God of heaven and with the Almighty God, judge of all, and with the counsel of heaven, and with Jesus Christ, the mediator of the new covenant, I order for my life, my days, and my assignments to align according to the books of heaven with the timelines ordained by God before the foundation of the world in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You know what the enemy tries to do? Sometimes he doesn't want us to align with the timeline of God so that he tries to alter the timelines of our journey so that we skip things, we miss things. Sometimes that's why when we, when we don't know the books, we also miss what is in our books and don't fulfill those things. So we are going to proclaim that everything is going to be aligned. We are not going to miss the timelines of God for our life, our family, our generation, our ministry. Let's proclaim that again. In agreement with the Lord of heaven and with the Almighty God, judge of all, and with the counsel of heaven, and with Jesus Christ, the mediator of the new covenant, I order for my life, my days, and my assignments to align according to the books of heaven with the timelines ordained by God before the foundation of the world in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. The timelines cannot be withheld. Therefore, we are going to proclaim that nothing is going to be delayed in your life. Anything that is delayed in your life, let's actually proclaim that there is perfect alignment. You will have what you are supposed to have when you are supposed to have. Not when, whenever. You are going to do things like that. You are going to have perfect alignment according to the journal of God. So let's proclaim that. Okay, let's say this together. In reference to the acts and operations of the throne of grace and mercy, I boldly declare complete cessation of any assignment from hell to be told, delay and restrain the fulfillment of the destiny of God in my life. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Satan has no authority when you realize what your assignment is. He cannot delay it. He cannot be told it. He cannot restrain it. We are not going to allow that to happen in the name of Jesus. So let's let's mean it. Let's understand our authority, our rights and proclaim that nothing will be delayed in my life in the name of Jesus. Let's proclaim. In reference to the acts and operations of the throne of grace and mercy, I boldly declare complete cessation of any assignment from hell to be told, delay and restrain the fulfillment of the destiny of God in my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Complete cessation in the name of Jesus. Complete cessation in the name of Jesus. Complete cessation in the name of Jesus. No more delay. No more restraint. In the name of Jesus. You will have what God has promised that you will have. Nothing will be withheld from you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise
Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Can we sing a song? Yeah. I, I promise you, the next one is definitely the last lap. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus.
Hallelujah. Praise you. Praise you, Jesus. Let's proclaim this. It is ordered now to heaven and earth, all creation and all the angels assigned to me to execute immediately all the orders, decrees, petitions, pronouncements, and prayers in this decree and in any other order or instrument deemed necessary for the establishment of the ordained destiny of God in my life, my generation, and my ministry in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. This is your life, uh, assignment for all of you. Let's proclaim that you're a son and a daughter of this land. It's part of your assignment, whatever your personal assignment may be, but this is the assignment that all of us carry. Let's proclaim that together. I decree and declare that I was born for such a time as this to be an agent of transformation. I have been handpicked by God to proclaim His excellence to this generation. I decree and declare that the territory assigned by God for my life, my sphere of influence, will recognize me as a son, daughter of the Most High God. The land I stand on will hear my voice, my commands, my proclamations, and my declarations, and my decrees. I stand here in the name of Jesus as a redeemer of my bloodline, my generation, and my land in the name of Jesus. Now you need to understand one thing. You're not out of time. This is your season. This is the season that God wanted you to be in. And you are going to be operate with all the potential that God has invested within you. And also, the place that you are in is not by mistake. We are going to proclaim that. Wherever you are, wherever the territory that God has actually brought you into, you will have the authority to operate the land in that area, whether it's your workplace, your ministry, your house, whatever it may be, the land will respond to you, obey you in the name of Jesus. Let's proclaim that again. I decree and declare that I was born for such a time and space to be an agent of transformation. I have been handpicked by God to proclaim His excellence to this generation. I decree and declare that the territory assigned by God for my life and my sphere of influence will recognize me as a son, daughter of the Most High God. The land I stand on will obey my voice, my commands, my proclamations, and my declarations, and my decrees. I stand here in the name of Jesus as a redeemer of my bloodline, my generation, and my land. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wherever that Lord takes you, you are going to possess the land. That is the promise that God gave Abraham. And then you are not just going to go into a place and work and without coming, without your inheritance. Okay. So wherever that you, the Lord is taking you, that you will possess for your generation. Okay, let's proclaim that. Almighty God, deliver the destiny of my feet to possess my possessions in my generation. God of my victory, by the power of your mighty hand, establish my steps and make them a terror to every power of the mind that every assigned to me. I decree and declare that I tread upon every scorpion and serpent in my territory and no harm will befall me and my household in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Go back to that. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. One last time. Let's proclaim this and finish with knowing that if God is taking you somewhere, you're going to get your inheritance from that place. And law, and you're not going to be just roaming around in places not knowing where you're going. God will order your steps. 2019 is not a year you can waste your time. 2019 is your, not a year where you can allow things to just skip through. It's a year that every minute of your day you're going to be walking according to the plan and purpose of God and you're going to see fruit in everything that you do. So let's proclaim that again. Almighty God, deliver the destiny of my feet to possess my possessions in my generation. God of my victory, by the power of your mighty hand, establish my steps and make them a terror to every power occupying the territory assigned to me. I decree and declare that I tread upon every scorpion and serpent in my territory, and no harm will befall me and my household in the name.
blessing rest upon them. Crown of blessing rest upon them. Protection of the Lord surround them. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord's rainbow rise upon them. And this national reward will defeat all the death that has gone before us. It will be like Noah's altar that he made in the midst of death and destruction. And the new season God established in the seasons will come for Sri Lanka. As they labor with the national prayer altar, the Lord's blessing come upon them. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you that we know that a, a dove with a branch of olive in the beak has been launched over Sri Lanka. And this dove will be the sign of Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka will not know, be known for blood, but it will be known for peace and prosperity. We thank you that since the monstrous things have been driven out, as Joel 2.19 promised, the marvelous things of the Lord are coming. Shall we say together, marvelous things of the Lord are coming. Marvelous things of the Lord are coming. God, these are expectations for Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka shall be saved. She shall be washed in the blood of the Lamb. She shall be washed in the blood of the Lamb. We will have a blood washed nation. Thank you, Lord. This is our expectation. And we defeat all the demons and devils and sorcery. Lord, we are commanding the crown of anointing to come over the nation of Sri Lanka. In the praises of your people and upon the heads of your people as they stand their crown and as they stand their territory. As Sudesh asked that we, as each one of us becomes an altar for God, that there would be a fire. The command of Leviticus 6, 11, a fire upon the altar that will never go out. It will be in the mountain of the Lord, the Lord's people will be the mountain of the Lord. And there would be the fire of the Lord sending upon the mountain of the Lord. And every demon, devil, principal, and power will fear to enter this land. Anuma, Pairava, Kalukumara, no demon will be able to access its altars and the invocations that politicians make be cut it out in the name of Jesus. We cut it out in the name of Jesus. We cut it out in the name of Jesus. And we pronounce that every demon altar is made ineffective and demons cannot access the chantings of the sorcerers, chantings of the astrologers, chanting of the manias and chanting of the palmies and any other such thing is cut off, cut off, cut off, cut off, cut off, cut off and the Lord will pronounce from heaven and the angels will sign up in the territory of Sri Lanka. Let's say together, territory of Sri Lanka, territory of Sri Lanka, free of demons, free of principalities, free of power and sorcery has no effect because we are exercising the anointing of the Lord. Oh Father, we thank you, we know this shall be done. Sri Lanka will be a blood-washed nation with no access to demons in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth because the Lord's anointing arrives.